Welcome back to No Man's Sky, everybody. Elon Paul here, and we're going to be uh, continuing on with our main save here and the playthrough. Um, please, and at the very beginning, I'm going to ask folks if you could go ahead and hit that like button, even if you're just seeing this uh, episode for just a few minutes. Uh, if you like what you've been seeing, the like button always helps, and really, really appreciate it. Plus, if you want to subscribe to the channel, that is always very helpful as well. Thank you very much, and really appreciate all your uh, all your attention to these videos and all your comments and, and communication with me. And again, if you do have any um, questions, if you have any ideas, things you would like to see, there's a comment section down there. I always respond to comments. Um, just ask you to keep it clean, um, be positive in your comments, be kind. Um, I don't think I've had more than about three trolls in my entire existence in doing these videos for the past two years. So I uh, really appreciate you guys. You guys have been great. And out of those, and just to be clear, out of those trolls, only two of them, uh, pardon me, only one of them actually turned out to be someone I really had to, uh, I had some issues with, unfortunately. Um, but the other two turned out to be uh, uh, subscribers. They actually ended up joining the channel and we ended up having some good communication. So, you know, not all communication can be considered troll. It may just be that you're uh, curious about something. Maybe you didn't word it right. And I try not to take things the wrong way. So, again, leave a comment. If you got a comment about how things you'd like to see or things you want to see done in like a one-on-one -on -one video, how do I do this? How do I do that? Hey, drop me a line. Let me know. Really appreciate it, guys. All right, so let's get started. Um... So we are in episode, hold on, I know this, 17 at this point. We are going to do the Atlantid versions of these, the Atlantid missions. So we're going to get that started. Um, I haven't done anything to my base, uh, and I've done nothing else to anything else that I have. So we're just going to go ahead and continue on and give, yourselves, uh, give you guys a uh, more of a playthrough style video here on the Atlantid missions. From beginning, hopefully to end, we'll see if we have time. Look at the size of that little guy, huh? He's tiny, tiny, tiny ship. Anyway. Yeah, ADHD. Get diverted. Squirrel! Look, squirrel! Yeah, right. Okay, move on. Into our ship. So what are we doing? Uh, investigate the hijack source. Navigation hijack diverted. Remote coordinates retained. Reach the marked location. Investigate the hijack source. Okay, let's, uh, let's head out. I don't think it's in the space station. It's going to be somewhere else, so let's see where it is. And we do have that to get. Let's, uh, oh, it says go to the galaxy map. Before we do that, let's hit the unknown grave real quick. I just want to get my um, re-upgrade, if you will. Atlas broadcast detected. Exit pulse to intercept. Should we? Yeah. Let's do that. Ooh, messenger of Atlas. What does he have to say? Nothing. There it is. This might be part of it. Atlas, uh, something Atlas Infinite, blah, 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 blah. Uh, sure, we'll, we'll accept it, whatever. Thanks for stopping by. Can we shoot you? No, nothing happens? Okay, great, just wondering. Sometimes you get resources from those things. Okay, from anything that you can hit in space, so, you know. So we're going to go back down here. Looks like we have an unknown grave right below us. Too high to initiate a landing. A little bit forward. Okay, there we go. Alright, that was kind of awkward. Sorry about that. It's like a toxic planet of some sort. Got some animals here, though. Let's see how many we got on the planet. I'm curious. That was... Uh, yeah, that's not what I was trying to scan. How many does it say? One of ten? And I'm going to get these guys because they're the butter butterfly styles. So, okay, good. Enough of that. Go over here. Much more than, but whenever we build, they wiped out cities, settlements, and the sentinels eradicate civilizations responsible for. Sentinel hunt. They join them, trace them to their... Ooh. By Keen in their great sentinel hunt, they join them, trace them to their... Wow. Okay, that was crazy. I obtained the glyph. Okay, but we get one of these. Thermal protection. So we get a cold protection unit that's worth 140. It's a B class. We'll sell it. We'll get a little extra nanites out of it. No big deal. All right, let's go out to hyperspace and continue with our mission. No more sidetracks. 
I'm going to just recharge my engine here. It's one of those. Okay. And now we're going into the galaxy map. Where are we headed? Current mission. Up. Uh, all the way over there. <clears throat> Where the heck is it taking me? Okay. Let's go over here. Weird. I better check my mission because it should have taken me to a system that was at least closer by, I think. I think. Okay, about to pop out. Nope, still says to, to, to go to the galaxy map, so I don't know where we're headed here. Because we're going pretty far now. And I don't see a destination in sight. And I need an Indium drive to get there. What is happening here? Okay, let's jump out of here real quick. And let's check this out. Is that taking me... You have to wonder where it's taking me. I'm not going to an Indium system at this point. I don't even think I can make an Indium drive. Can I? No, I don't even have the, 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 the recipe for it. And I cannot restart the mission. So I don't know if it wants me to go into the other... Uh, uh, galaxy, Euclid, and do this. But we'll keep heading on. Let's go ahead and do it. I'm not going to be able to hit the Indium world. So let me just head over here. Yeah, that'll, that'll work. We'll just go here. I don't know where it's taking me. We're going to find out. I've never seen one take me this far before. We have access to our uh, base. I don't have a teleporter there, but we can still get there through a space station. So shouldn't be a problem. So if we have to go all the way back to the beginning, we can. Okay, and it's going to tell us to go into the galaxy map again, right? What's this? Nope, galaxy map again. Hey, okay. I don't know about you. Oh, there it is. Okay, now it's popped up again. Wow, where is it taking me? It's really going far. Ah, okay, it's heading me all the way over here. Okay, so... It wants me to go to this system right here. Alright, so apparently this is systems I've been at before. So this is probably where that settlement was, and where I first popped into the um, Eisentum galaxy. So that's where it's taking me. Alright. Not a problem. I didn't realize that. And apparently the system I was I have created my uh, base on was not the system I started at. It's a system I probably did during an anomaly mission and didn't realize that I had a paradise planet right there. Anyway, uh, circumstantial events have landed me on a decent planet, that's all. All right, so we're in the system we need to be in. Here we go. Only took 10 minutes to figure it out. Ah. Of the bouncing ball. Ooh, check out that space station. Sorry, gotta take a look. Isn't that cool? I don't think I've seen one that looked like that yet. With the with the base down below and everything like that. That's really, really neat. Um, let's get this as part of our rep uh, repertoire of space stations. I'm just gonna land and take off again. Cool really cool. Reminds me a little bit of Return of the Jedi flying into the uh, Death Star when I see these kind of openings like this towards the end of them flying into the Death Star. It's pretty cool. Alright, so we're in and out. Okay. We'll check it out later. Alright, let's go over to there. 
to this planet. And we probably do not have any clue what kind of planet that is. Okay, let's check it. Dissonance. Okay, that's obvious. Um, <clears throat> is this a... Corvax system? Let's check it. Yes, it is. Okay, so we have a Corvax system here. So we have an opportunity to also get ourselves a Atlantid multi-tool. Atlantid? I think it's an Atlantid multi-tool. Yes, this is a... Unless this is Atlantid multi-tool, this is a Sentinel multi-tool, I think. I don't quite remember how it works. I don't remember which one's which. But anyway, we're looking for a decent... Another, another upgrade. Another even better, hopefully, multi-tool. So we'll see what happens here. So this is approximate location, as it says. I don't know if it's a ship or a building, so we're going to come in a little bit early. There we go. And we will go to first person. Alright, we did have some stuff nearby. Let me scan. There's a spot there. Let's run over here real quick. Could this be it? That is a beacon? A base. Okay. Let's go over this way just a little bit and just make sure that that isn't it. We'll do another scan. I don't see anything. Alright, let's go over here. I'm stuck. Hold on. Alright. All right, let's go ahead and land where it's telling us that that could be the spot. And I think it could be it. So let's let's land there. Let's land there. I think that's going to be it. Okay. And I always go into, into third-person view because you get in and out of your ship a little bit quicker that way. All right, so wherever we're headed, it's about 300 units that way. All right. I'm going to go ahead and get this location marked. Uh, I'm going to ignore the resources for the time being, but I do want to get some more of this. Not the, mostly the Atlanta DM, but we'll get the Radiant Shards as we go. Because obviously those are going to come in handy for me. Up, 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 up. There was a building there. Why didn't it show me? Oh, it's a campsite. Oh, okay. So it's going to be directing us to a new Sentinel ship. Fabulous. Grab that while you can. I got a lot of stuff to buy. Don't pick up the Gravitino balls unless you want to piss things off. Any more? Yeah, there's a bunch over there. They're a little bit far away. Looks like this is where we were headed. Alright. I'm going to bring in my ship. Put you right there. Now, as usual, when I hit these campsites, I always like to hit all the harmonic scrap around the outside edges. This is another Atlantid multi-tool, but this is a, definitely a system where you can find a uh, the better Atlantid multi-tools as well. So we'll hit all these scraps real fast. I got an upgrade out of it. That's good. All right, there we go. And a multi-tool expansion slot. Sweet. So we got some good stuff out of it. Let me see what this is. Life support module. Uh, yeah, I'll check it out real quick. What do we got? 36% uh, solar power and 6% life support. It's definitely better than that one. All right that in my ship. Um, don't really need the rusted metal. We're going to get rid of the living slime. We'll add that to my collection down at the other place and put this in my starship. This is a storage augmentation for a ship. That's good and multi-tool upgrade. And we got a little bit of that out of it and a little bit of that. All right, good. Let's move on. So where are we headed? Headed over here to talk to this thing. Let's hit it. Autophage. Autophage multi-tool is what I'm thinking. Anyway, Okay, so we can't understand anything. Uh, Autophage speaks in the same mechanical voice that accompanied the hijacked attempt upon my ship. However, if the sounds make it makes are words, language, I do not understand what is being said. 
poke it, scan it, speak to it, leave it. Uh, we're going to speak to it. Okay. Talks again. I am certain the autophage is trying to communicate something. Um, say you don't understand. The more we talk to it, the more it's going to understand us. More language. Um, what do we want to give it? I'm going to say Atlantidium. A sparking sound like electrical wires short-circuiting echoes somewhere within the head. Suddenly, my exosuit reports receipt of a, local, of a set of local coordinates. I do not trust this head, but these coordinates seem my only clue toward understanding what, is trying to, what it is trying to communicate. Okay. So, that's fine. So, let's head over here. I'm going to go ahead and unlock this thing. Harmonic interface. Uh, obviously, there's a math process here. Uh, we want to input, get out, and then scan, because we get into it faster. All right, so 9 minus 4, 5. 10 and 16. So 5, 10, 16 are our three math units. So 5, 10, and 16, which unlocks it. Uh, terminal ceased its digital whaling. I'm permitted access to the camp system. So we're going to deactivate the multi-tools first of all. Okay, harmonic seal deactivated. We go back in, and we should be able to have access to the dissonant spike. So we're going to find a ship as well. Hopefully it doesn't get rid of our other um, location that it's sending us to. It shouldn't. But it may turn on a different mission and eliminate it from our radar for a moment. Uh, no, no, it's over there. Okay, how far away? 17 minutes on foot. How far away are you? 16 hours on foot. I am not going to walk there. Um, let's check out the multi-tool to see if it's better than what I've got. We can take it, though, and get stuff for it. So, it's a B-class, nothing special. I am going to take it because it's free. Um, I'm not going to exchange it with this, obviously. We're just going to take it, and we will trade it in later. But I need to switch back to my other multi-tool. Wow, we got a lot of crap in here, don't we? Which one is my multi-tool? Is it this one? Yeah, that's my multi-tool that I'm using right now. Okay, good. I'm just curious what the other one was, because I just realized I had more than one of those. Okay, this is another one I can get rid of. That was a C-class, so I've got two multi-tools to get rid of. And the last one is the one I think I had from a, for a long time. And I pulled everything out of So we can get rid of all three of those. So that's going to give us some more room. All right, good. Back to the beginning. And the first multi-tool, which is my best one at the moment. Is that broken? No. Okay, never mind. No, that's fine. Okay, so we're on our way. Shall we head there or to the ship? Let's head there first, and then we'll head to the ship afterwards. Because the ship's on the other side of the planet. Off we go. Yeah, 12 seconds away by ship. Because we pulled it in, we gotta readjust our power. Okay, and it looks like we had a. Hmm. Let's save our launch thrusters and land over here. I had no idea what just happened. I thought it would land here. I don't know why it missed it. That's been happening to me a lot lately. I don't know if the latest update has screwed with that in some way. But my whole point of landing over here is so I could get this. So, we'll use a little bit of th launch thruster to get it back. Kind of a pain in the neck. Anyway, let's see what kind of, uh, oh. Alright, I didn't realize that. Let's take the ship over. I did not realize that that was a um, monolith I was heading to. And it looks like we got another dissonant resonator over there, too. That's interesting. A couple of them. They're all over the place. Good grief. All right. Let's go ahead. Our launch thrusters are going to be, you know, killed because of the stupidity, but there we are. Very nice. I won't take out the uh, resonator yet. While we're here... Always hit the, the knowledge stones while you're here. You get three free ones. That's three free words that you get really quick. And it's directing us to the fourth one. This is a good thing. All right. 
The extracted coordinates led quite precisely to this hidden plinth, though it is clearly not the primary interface for the ancient structure. Ancient glyphs are carved around the circumference of the stone dais, an opening yawns expectantly in the center. Nanites, Pugnium, or Atlantidium? We want to offer Atlantidium every time. Atlantidium crackles and bursts. A dormant energy rumbles from within the structure. Everything goes purple. Now, before we leave, we're going to come back here. Okay? So let's go up to the top now that everything's been changed. Hello. There we go. The structure was unmistakably constructed by Corvax as a monument to their people, yet I have no sense of being observed by Corvax echoes. It is as though the monolith has inverted, its insides turned outwards. Weird. Something else is here, another type of entity. And then there's that language we don't understand again. My mind folds, the molecules of this planet disassemble into a cloud of chaos. They reconstruct themselves into new surroundings. I am thrust into a perspective that is not my own. So we're going to look behind. We'll start there. I gaze into the distance behind me. Reality tilts and the vision shifts. I am grounded in my body, aware of the breeze on my cheeks and the soil beneath my toes. My mind is healthy and ambitious and strong, organizing theories and solving problems with ease and pleasure. Suddenly, unexpectedly, I'm shredded from my shell. My mind is in tatters. What little is left of me shivers in a dark, rusty nowhere as some other entity, fat and whole, claims the body that was mine. The pain is terrible. The image fades. I am suspended in darkness. Okay, now we're going to go ahead and stay in the present. Let's go ahead and select that. Very, very interesting, though. I try to focus on my surroundings. Reality lurches and a vision takes shape. I am a fragment of consciousness, raw and incomplete and alone, yet unafraid. I am finally free, unshackled from my tyrannical rule that has confined me all my existence. Cool. I crawl through the dark, sensing others shaped like myself. We link ourselves together just enough to become whole. We form an alliance, but not a convergence. The image fade. I am suspended in darkness. Okay, time to look ahead. I gaze into the distance ahead, as though peering through time itself, the vision transforms. In the vacuum of deep space, something rattles into existence, manifesting matter where there was none before. The purple light is blinding. She is glorious. She is reborn. She is not alone. I fall to my knees, humbled, gratified, awed. Reality is restored. I am returned to my own body, my own mind. The structure offers me a final packet of data, a listing of glyphs enumerated in the language of this inverted monolith. Wow. Okay, pretty cool. We're going to extract the numeric, numeric data, it says. This is the same language spoken by the head at the abandoned camp. Perhaps I am now better equipped to understand it. And we're done with that area. Wow. Okay, so needless to say, this is really, really weird. Um, so we're starting to get a little more of an interest in the Void Mother. Um, let me just check this over here. Yeah, it's not going to pop up. All right. And we've learned a whole bunch of words, obviously. We're getting all the, you know, updates there. Um, yeah, that thing's not going to pop up. We'll get that later. That's where you usually get your multi-tool from. So we'll be taking a look at that later. So we're going to head back to the ship now. And a little quick excerpt. Um, I'm going to just add this in real quick. The audio on this particular video got mangled somehow from just a little bit ago to now, and I'm re-recording the audio, so I'm trying to do a voiceover at this point. Um, so we're going to be scanning some animals, and I'm trying to remember exactly everything that was going on. Obviously, I like to scan the animals on every planet to try to get an idea of what's going on, uh, to get, you know, obviously as many nanites as I can get, because, you know, hey, yeah, it's always handy. Um, so we're going to keep scanning all those, but the whole Void Mother thing is really, really interesting at this point. It's starting to really develop into something else, the autophage and everything like that. So let's get the rest of these. Oh man, there sure is a lot of birds on this planet. Okay, what are we up to? Seven to nine? Not bad. Not bad. Oh yeah, we got a, we got a uh, mirror right there. That's hilarious that we can get, but you know, not going to do it. That's just going to start, you know, a whole little battle thing going on. We don't want to do that. All right, so back to the ship, and we're taking off. Now, I'm trying to keep my audio on on the video while I'm re-recording this, so we're going to head out. We're going to head to wherever it's basically telling us. It says, uh, 
wants us to return to the camp converse with the autophage head. So that's where we should be going right now. There we go. Okay. So a lot of the game audio that you usually hear is going to be gone at this point, but unfortunately I can't re-record everything. So once you're done with the mission, it's gone. Back to the head. Okay, so the head says language, something, 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 modules 5, 15, 5, 10. 15, 5, 10, right? Well, I couldn't remember at that moment, so 15, 5, 10. Come on, Paul, get your, get your act together here. I'm going to go 5, and then 10, and then 15. There we go. Translation module defragmented. Hello, pre-built entity. Thank you for the assistance. I am autophage, whatever. I have been positioned here to interface with pre-built entities. How did you discover this camp? Hmm... I'm probably going to introduce myself. I think that's the proper thing to do here. Fascinating. We do not frequently welcome visitors. It has been 3,984 years since our last. It is interesting to hear your introduction. I am an autophage. We are unlike any... We are unlike other electronic platforms you may know. We do not possess the arrogance of the Gorvax. Your kind is neither less nor more than mine. You simply are. So now we're going to go ahead and try to confront about the the hijack. Now, let's ask about the pre-built entity. That's probably a better idea. You are biological. The growth of your shell was automated, I believe. <laughs> you did not salvage your own limbs. Your tissue and your sinew grew in parallel with your mind. There are many like you. Most of the universe is pre-built, and you... Autophage stops abruptly, cutting himself off mid-sentence. I can hear the co their cognitive... Cog Agitation, good grief. The turning of rusty gear against rusty gear. <laughs> In front about the hijack. Ah, I see. That was you. They had a silent a moment. When they speak again, they sound almost embarrassed. I apologize, pre-built entity. This was my own error, an accident. There are there are starships out there who are most who are more than metal shells, alive but not free, all in red, enslaved to a hive mind. We intend only to liberate the imprisoned. We intend no harm upon independent pilots. Alive and free. Those two are all are in red. That's really interesting. Something intrigues me, pre-built entity. I made an error with your ship. I do not frequently make errors. I probed for the three dominant life form patterns. There was no match. The starship appeared unpiloted. What manner of life form are you? Hmm, I'm going to say I'm a traveler. Not an anomaly, but just a traveler. Traveler. Yes, I know this term. I am generating a theory. Tell me, pre-built traveler entity. You possess a starship, therefore. This is not the first planet you have seen, correct? Oh, of course. Confirm. The starship traverses one side of the universe. Material, matter, physics. But my theory concerns the other side. The other me method of travel. There is something... I detect it in your shell. An echo of... Psst, Void in purple. Interesting. I theorize you must have existed there transitionally. You must have entered the portals in purple. Yes, we did. So we're gonna we can't we have to confirm it. Can't deny it. But this makes a very interesting thought. It means that travelers were sent by the Void Mother. Could they be? They're not just a anomaly in the video in in the uh, universe that the Atlas uh, doesn't quite understand, and maybe perhaps we came from the Void to begin with. We were on the other side at one time. It's beginning to look like everything's tying together in regards to uh, Light No Fire. Yes, this aligns. You carry something in your shell, as we do. You were foretold in red, the Disruptor. It just confirms what we just said. The Atlas and the Void Mother have been doing this all along. The word lingers in the air a moment, but before I can interject, Autophage continues. I extend a challenge, Disruptor. Let us test my theory. I will inform the other Autophage of your coming. To perceive them, your scanner will require an extension. I will provide the schematic, but you must build it with your own hands. Consider this a ritual of introduction. 
Very nice. So we're going to leave and we should be getting a, there it is, scan harmonizer. We're going to need radiant shard, which we got, a microprocessor, and more runaway mold. Yeah, the runaway mold's an issue because I don't have a lot on me. I think I only have a little, we might, hmm. I think I recall, I think we had some back at our cargo container, if I remember correctly. But yeah, we don't have enough. And while I could break down certain elements, like for instance, I can go into the ship, take some radiant shards, and I can break them down into nanites. We kind of don't want to do that if we can get around it. So let's get this installed. We'll put the radiant shard in. We'll need the runaway mold. Microprocessor we can probably do right now. we we'll just get a, yeah, there it is make one of those where he had a carbon nanotube so all right so that's in there and all we need now is the nanites all right um yeah it's going to go through that stuff on the right to indicate that everything's been completed one step at a time uh okay so it's at this point in the video that i am considering what's happened and trying to determine what we need to do here um because i know that we don't have a lot on us in regards to nanites we would need curiosities or something like that in order to get what we're looking for but I haven't quite realized at this point that, oh yeah, I think I have some in my cargo container back at my base. See, there's the runaway mold down there at the bottom. Yeah, that's it. Yeah, you're figuring it out. It's funny doing a voiceover because, you know, you're remembering what, what happened. <laughs> and this is about a week or two after I recorded this, so this makes it a little bit different. I'm going through every area to try to figure out what I need to be doing here. It's hilarious. So while my brain figures out what's going on here, like I said, the radiant shard, I think even the crystallized heart, if we break them down, we can get nanites from them. Taking out um, sentinels will give us nanites too. Just taking them out generally will give you nanites. So there's something else you can consider as well. I don't think a lot of people realize that. You're not paying attention to it in the heat of battle. Living slime, yes. Viscous, you can convert those over into it as well. See, if I had not gotten rid of the stuff I picked up from all the little uh, uh, wheelbarrows around the camp encampment, I might have been able to make enough. So I could check those, the damaged machineries. They'll give us some nanites, usually. And we got a couple of them here. Again, like I said, I do have some back at the uh, cargo container, but this might be quicker. Don't touch those. Leave those guys alone. You do that, you start a nasty little fight with some sentinels. Okay, so it's got some feces on it. I might I probably just went ahead and deleted it, but man, that would have been a good idea to hang on to. All right, we got 27 more nanites. <clears throat> so we had some... You can't see it right now, but there was another broken machinery on the hill. So I'll probably head up there and get some more. There it is. There it is. <coughs> Pardon me. Should have muted my microphone, but I think last time I muted my microphone, that's what caused the video issues. So probably audio issues with the video here. <coughs> Trying to re-record this in the morning, so obviously that's why my voice is the way it is. And why it changed suddenly. Yeah, you got that in the way. Just get rid of it. There you go. Good boy. All right. So viscous fluids, we could turn that in. See? See? Just in case we need more. And how many did we get? Besides that, uh, uh 20. No, we actually, I think we got enough now. 27 and 32. Yeah, that's uh, 59. So, yeah, we should have enough. Okay, let's see. Not sure why I'm doing that. I got I should have plenty of nanites now, but whatever. Oh, it wasn't the nanites, right? It was the the other stuff. That's right. That's right. Runaway mold. We needed 100 runaway mold, not nanites. I keep saying that. I don't know why. So that's why we're turning all this in the runaway mold. We should have enough now with all the viscous fluids and stuff like that that we've acquired. So I'm actually scanning around looking for um, more animals that I haven't discovered yet. There we go. Look at that. 
done, that's going to turn into runaway mold. So with 30 seconds, we will have what we need. So there's one way you can get the runaway mold. You know, curious deposits are a great thing to find if you can find it on, a, on any given planet. Heck, if you can find yourself a nice planet, uh, a planet that has a really nice large supply of those runaway mold, phew, I would say park yourself a base there. That would be really, really handy. But, you know, we were talking about the Void Mother earlier, and it, it's just, it's really the thing that you really want to be able to do. Um, as you're going through this whole scenario, even with Artemis getting lost between realms, that was probably a realization by the Atlas indicating that it thought that it started to catch on, if you will, and trapped Artemis in between realms. So, very interesting. The thing is, if you think about um, Null, Null didn't get it. Null thought he was he was uh, an entity who was just searching the universe and resetting it over and over and over again, so he could see as many universes and planets as he could. So, all right. So we're using our scan harmonizer thing, and ta-da! Well, that was not creepy at all, right? Awesome. So we're going to meet an inhabitant of the harmonic camp now that we've scanned. Construct him. Welcome, pre-built entity. Something are the disruptor. We're going to ask about the harmonic camp. That's the only thing we can do. Not all the words are going to come out, so I'm going to just say the word something every single time we have a word that we don't understand. Something built, something camped together, something, something at home constructed, something own, bodies, shelter. That's all we got out of that. The autophage language has a melodic quality to it. The tones are simple and pure, but with a gritty crunch not heard in Corvax voices. Although my translation is imperfect, I grasp the gist of what they are telling me. This camp is autophage constructed, as are their bodies? Leave. Okay. So, we visited one, but it says speak to another inhabitant of the harmonic camp, so we got to speak to others. Um, I do want to get a picture of this dude. He was pretty cool. I don't even know where the heck my pictures are going anymore, so... I love the staff he's, he's holding there. There's something about the skulls that I really like on the staffs. I know a lot of people go for all these other parts, but man, that skull is just too cool. There we go. That looks pretty good. And click. We're just waiting for the computer to catch up here. Or actually, Steam, I think, to catch up with the picture. It's not going to be the greatest quality in the world. For some reason, I've been having trouble with that lately. All right, let's go visit other ones. Here we go. Um, go ahead. Yeah, i got to get past the milestone. Talk to the other construct. Did something, ship disruptor, something, something, apologize, something, error. Ask about the camp. Uh, something has constructed home, something, are many like. Yeah, we can understand most of what they're saying here. So we're just going to keep talking until we get some more words. Ew, disruptor, something, something, or among, welcome, among, okay. The camp is one among many homes, something, many worlds, dissonant worlds are a blank, blank, uh, dream and a lattice of purple. Interesting. Constructed life form offers me a handful of lantidium. They handle the substance delicately, rever reverently, as though it were a precious heirloom. Though these beings seem civil enough, I feel a gulf of understanding between them and myself. I should discuss my discovery with priest entity Nada. Perhaps these robotic people are known to them. <laughs> yeah. You know, one of the uh, ironic things in No Man's Sky is the naming of Nada. Which, you know... You know, what? Which, you got a lot of stuff over there? You know, what do you have over there? Nada. Nothing. So, we're going to check out this ship first, because remember, we found that ship earlier. It'll at least give us a little extra cash. But we're also are curious what kind of uh, ships are on this planet. So, let's see what it's like. Maybe it'll be a little better than my pickup truck here. Okay. Hmm. Oh, okay. This is a scout ship. Interceptor is what I usually call those. There's no swing wings or anything like that, but it's smaller. Nice. But if I'm not mistaken, I don't quite remember. Let's see if we can get some stuff over here. Sometimes they have good things. Eh, Pugnium. Blah. 
not worth it. Yeah, checking the animals real quick just to make sure there isn't any I haven't discovered since there was only two. Oh, yay, radioactive supercell. And yeah, C-class. Not really worth my time. Getting the hyaline brain is not important, so we'll just take the, uh, uh, the salvage glass. That'll work for now. Once we get to the point where we can duplicate, where I decide I'm going to duplicate, but we're going to go ahead and get rid of that because we're not going to be doing anything with the, the ship. So we've gotten rid of the quest to find the ship. Um, yeah, opening that up didn't really give us anything. Probably gave us like a... Uh, uh, who knows what it gave us? I don't even know. Oh, Animatter. There you go. Um, we got rid of it because we're not going to get that ship. So there's no use in having it clogging up our missions. All right, so we're going to pull in the anomaly now and talk to this, the, the person named after nothing. <laughs> so how much information do you think he's going to give us? Just to give you a rough idea, right? Most of you already know. <laughs> so yeah, it, it, it really starts tying things together. And you make it makes you wonder how long has Hello Games had this story in their background? Are they just piecing it together as they go along? Are they really that creatively lucky to create all this and bring it all together? Um, or have they all planned this all along? Let's see what Presentity Nada says. Nada is happy to see Traveler Friend again, but Traveler Friend looks full with news. We tell him about the autophage. I tell Nada of the Harmonic Camp, not as abandoned as it first appeared. I tell them of its electronic inhabitants, these cloaked autophage, and their melodic language, so similar to Corvax, yet quite distinct. Hmm. Nada is very quiet as they listen. When I finish speaking, they remain so quiet and so still that I wonder if they have forgotten I am standing here. They are difficult to read sometimes. Finally, they speak. Nada wonders. They trail off, shaking their head. No, Nada will not wonder. Nada will understand. Our data is insufficient to know if this pattern is familiar. Yet, also, Nada thinks of terminal echoes, thinks of Polo's echo construct, thinks of older stories before Nada's divergence. Nada cannot help it. They are just thoughts. We should try to understand builder entities. Echo construct may know this pattern better than Nada. Okay, so Nada is sending us over to the build construct instead. So we're going to head there, not to Polo, but to, to the build construct. So there it is over there. So uh, you recall this entity over there that we built at one point. I think we might be out of... Um, what is the word I'm looking for? At a sync, at a, at a sync with the storyline somehow. I think we jumped ahead by accident, but we'll have to complete this out. The odd-looking construct writhes excitedly, their facial tubes swaying. They fix all five eyes upon me. Here, Shell feels her. Show Atlantidium. Here Shell is. I, I, I know her. All shells know this crystal. All electronic hearts know her. Void, 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 void. Hmm. So what do you ask about? Uh, ask about the autophage. I, yes, I know them. Built others. No entity deserves erasure. Something have built, something own. Doing it in the uh, other language. I am content here. I am home. Acceptance of no answers, but others are different. Built others are different. They look for her. He's back to the regular language there. Built others respect sturdy hands, hands that build. Meet them where they are. Knowledge through friendship, friendship through trust. Interesting. Ask about the construct. I, I, I am. Construct in the other language. Assembled here by Polo hands and by your hands, other entity, I was made here, but I remember before here, before assembly, a mind is not a body, a mind remembers. I, I remember. Built others on quiet wavelength, only a whisper, long distance trace difficult. Other entity, take this memory, build it to hear them louder. So we accept the blueprint that they just gave us of a polyphonic core. Requires Atlantidium, which we have plenty of, quantum computer, and living glass. The living glass is a problem. But I think we have some. We may need to get the uh, recipe for that here. 
It's the only problem with uh, doing this. I, I probably should have waited on this particular line uh, before. What am I looking at? Oh, okay. Yeah, while we're here, we're going to get rid of some of our old multi-tools that we don't need, that don't have anything. So, but while I'm doing that and getting rid of these old multi-tools, the point is, is that um, if you do this line, I, and again, I think I made a mistake doing this line with the autophage before I completed out, like the Atlas run-through, or getting me my um, assistant robot, if you will. <laughs> There seems to be a gap in the in what I've done. So yeah, just want to check that multi tool real quick, make sure it wasn't one of the good ones. There we go, because my other one is named end of the matter. So there we go. There's my regular one. Good, 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 good. We got some upgrades out of it. Since Sentinel wet weapon shards, those can come in handy. Once useful springs. Hmm. Excellent. Very good. All right, good. Let's move on. Um, I'm thinking now of how I can create the parts. So we're looking for living glass. We have glass, of course. We do not have living. Oh, we do have living glass. We can get one lubricant, five glass. Glass is not a problem. What do we do to make the lubricant? There it is. Uh, 50 fecium and 400 gamma root. Okay, this is a situation where I have decided that uh, the fecium is not a problem, but the gamma root's a pain in the neck, and I'd have to go to a planet and find some. But my better option would be to go back to my base. Sooner or later, I'm going to realize that by running through this, it would be better just to take my... I'm going back and going through the base portal, uh, the anomaly portal. I'm going here in order to not just transmit milestone. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and sell some of those old stuff that we don't need and get some of the nanites out of it. We'll keep the Sentinel weapon shards, of course. It's a lot of nanites, but it's good to have. There we go. And we're going to go back in, and we're going to just get transmit milestone data. Hmm, not bad, 700. All right, so we're going to go back through the portal in the anomaly and go back to our base. And the brilliance of this is if you leave this here... Oh, okay, I think I'm going to run away, but we want to talk to Nada first. Ah, okay, we're going on with the mission. Did, did Polo Friends Project Wake, did they live? You spoke to the autophage. Hmm, they're an entity. They have a self. But whatever their choice, Nada does not think they are a builder entity any more than Nada is. Yeah, yeah. Ask about her. Ooh, friend entity. I'm sorry. If Nada understands construct entity's meaning, Nada does not wish to discuss it. Hmm, thank you, Nada. Once again, you're not... You're not a telling me anything. Tell me about the blueprint. Impressive. Travel entity is fast to gain construct entity's trust. This is a useful memory print. Next steps. Nada's opinion is limited. Always. But Nada... Oops. <laughs> Builder entities value this purple lattice. Construct entity responds. Even Nada's carapace responds. Other electronics may respond too. So he's basically you know, encouraged me to go ahead and do it. But And Builder entities... Do not seem dangerous. Data comes from time to time. Friendship may too. It is traveler entity's choice. Both are valid. It is either or. As usual, Nada's opinion is uh, useless. Anyway, let's move on. So hopefully, I don't quite remember what I did here, but hopefully we don't just go to our ship. Hopefully we recognize the fact that if we go to the other portal, yeah, there we go. I see the brilliance about leaving the anomaly here in this system and using the portal to go to our base and do what we need to do is we can come right back to the anomaly. And that's a really brilliant thing to be able to do here because then you're still in the system. Pretty cool. So we're going to our base and we're going to go to the Endial kind of colony, which we didn't, uh, we didn't rename. We should have renamed for the, for the uh, Eisenton galaxy. We'll do that later at one point. Even in the next episode, I forgot to do that. <laughs> all right, so as we get there, you'll see what happens here. And again, I'm sorry about the game audio getting all mangled like that. I have no idea what happened. I think it might have had something to do with my other, uh, <clears throat> my other recording software, I suppose. Having some trouble, and I don't know why. And I keep losing my voice here this morning, but that's okay. 
All right, so we're back to our base area, and you'll notice we appeared right next to our um, cargo containers. All right. Let's see. So, see, we can go right back to, return to the Space Anomaly. That's a brilliant thing to be able to do. As long as you don't jump in your ship and go somewhere, or go up to the space station or something like that, you can always jump back to the previous system. So there's our Fesium that we needed. We need Gamma Root. Um, I think it's in a different... You notice all the nice items I have in there? Yeah, I'm going to kick myself later about that. Anyway, um, Gamma Root. We've got the Fungal Mold. We have Cactus. Selenium. Okay. Frost crystals, yes. Okay. Come on. Move on. You're annoying me. Come on. I'm annoying myself. Uh, there's the fungal mold at the top. Gamma root. There we go. Okay, so this is one of those situations where I'm not going to go to another planet. We want to finish out this particular episode in the next few minutes. So what we're going to do is... And we do need a uh, quantum computer that's really handy. Good that I have, have some in my inventory. Uh, we're going to go ahead and duplicate duplicate this stuff so and I know I don't have any more in there I don't know what I'm looking for at this point maybe I'm just you know window shopping okay so 152 and we needed 400 of it so we need to duplicate it three times so what I'm gonna do is I'm most likely gonna pause the video here and I'm gonna duplicate glitch that stuff and then we're gonna go ahead and do it Okay, so we got the two pieces. We just need the living glass. Okay, very good. So, looking at the recipe again. There we go. See? Plenty of fecium. We just need to get the gamma root. So, most likely, like I said, we're going to pause. And we're going to use the portable refiner series. So, we're going to get two more portable refiners. And we're going to duplicate glitch this stuff in. So, I'm going to go ahead and create two more metal plates. There we go. We're going to make three of these. We have one on us. We have availability to make five. I guess we had other metal plates on us already. Nope, 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 nope. Yep. Go into the first portable refiner. Put in the gamma root. There it is. And two more down. Right, right in the same spot as it. One and two. And then pick them both up. One, two, three. Look at the top right. We now have 456 gamma root. Okay, so that's how we had to do it. So I don't know why I'm going in there yet. We have to create our... There we go. You got it, Paul. I knew you'd figure it out. I had faith. Okay, we make our lubricant. And now we can go and make our... Almost living glass. We need to make glass, dummy. <laughs> All right. Put a little in there. And silicate powder, of course. You can find it. I have faith. There you go. And we just need five of it, so. There we go. 25 seconds later, we'll get it. While we're doing that, we're going to drop back into our storage, and we're going to put the stuff that we have in our inventory back in there. It's up there at the top. I can see it. Come on, put it in there. I don't know what you're scrolling for. Up at the top. No. Well, you do have to put them in some place. But see, your inventory's full, dummy. Come on. Even I see what's happening. Go to the other cargo container. And we're going to organize our inventory, of course. <clears throat> uh, yeah, this guy's frustrating me as much as he's, as he's frustrating you. Trust me. I don't know what's wrong with him. He's driving me nuts. Yep, I know. We have metal plates. Very good, Paul. Send a weapon charge, yep, hang on to them, I know. Duplicate, yep, yep. Go to your other cargo container. Nope, you're not going to do it, you're going to do this first. All right, that's fine. I had some metal in there, so I'm going to go ahead and drop it in and make some, so I can get rid of it from our inventory. There we go. And that takes a minute to do, and while we're waiting, we'll go ahead and get the living glass created. Boom. So now we can go to our multi-tool and complete it. We are now done with this. And we're going to go to the other cargo container, again, like I've been saying, and put our stuff in there. There we go. Uh, we have... That should be it. Yes? Good. All right. You're all set, my friend. So everything's done and ready to go. Um, we actually have some other things we could probably store in there if we were smart, but we're not smart today, apparently. So we're going to hang on to all this crap in our inventory just to clog it all up because we have nothing else better to do. 
like all this meat for some reason. I don't know why I keep hanging on to it. Even in further episodes, I keep looking at going, why is it still there? I think I'm waiting for a nutrient processor. We can turn it into food and sell it for nanites. But that's another story. But I don't need to carry it around on me. So anyway. Yep. That's right. I had the one extra in my inventory because this one's sitting on the ground and almost done. And we're just going to pick it up when it's done. And we're going to get all the resources from it. The rest of the carbon, the ferrite dust. Okay. Good deal. All right. So now we can go back to the anomaly, right? Come on. That's okay. I figure it out in a moment. You all can sit back and watch and laugh at the uh, voiceover on this one. This is pretty good. I love it. Come on. Yes, I know. We can do both of those. That's the thing. Which ones are we going to do? But it says, it's funny, when you go to They Who Returned, it tells you do one or the other. You end up having to do both. You're going to find that out in the next episode. So, Okay, so we're going to do, it says we're going to do that one. We end up doing the prayers first. So we'll worry about it later. All right, so sooner or later, come on, you can figure it out. I know you can't, I have faith. Come on, buddy. You only got a few minutes left. You can do it. Yeah, 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 charge it up. I know, we got that. You're not using it here yet. Now we got to go audience with the autophage, enter an autophage site. You know what to do. Show them. There we go. Return to space anomaly. Select it. Immediately beams you back to the anomaly. Puts you in a good spot too. It puts you like right out in front and your ship is parked in a nice spot. So it's kind of cool. Better of course if you're not uh, in multiplayer. So anytime now. So yeah, like I said, the game audio is kind of crap, but at least you have the link between episode one and episode three now. So we're at the Roborop. Roborop? Interesting. I never noticed the name before. Okay, and we're going to jump back in our um, pickup truck over here. There we go. And off we go. And complete the audience with autophage. Back to the planet. Diverting power, diverting engines. Okay, we're heading straight back down to the planet at this point. Gonna keep bugging us about that uh, exosuit upgrade too. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is land, and then we're gonna use the polyphonic core. You don't have to do it, you just go into your multi tool, and you are going to, as you can see here, locate the autophage camp, just left click on it. There you go. And it's gonna look for a camp, and it'll, it will usually find a camp close by, usually. Like, see that one there is an autophage camp, and you look at it, it says 15 hours. I say usually because it also does the stuff like it does for the, um, uh, when you're looking for, like, a minor settlement or something like that. Instead of finding one right next to you, it finds one on the other side of the planet from you, even though there may be one within walking distance. So I have no idea why it does that all the time, so... At least it'll be daylight at the camp when we get there, because I think we're flying to the complete other end. Nope, not daylight yet. Okay. Apparently the whole planet is in nighttime now. Little, uh, little known fact about No Man's Sky. <clears throat> the planets don't rotate. When you're on a planet, the um, celestial objects rotate over the planet, oddly enough. That planet becomes the center of your universe, if you will. It's a very odd thing. I don't know how they manage it, but it's a weird thing. Okay. There we go. <clears throat> I think it has a little problem with, um, <clears throat> pardon me, figuring things out. So we're going to go ahead and do a quick scan, which we shouldn't have done. We didn't have to do that. There we go. Yeah, we did. Apparently we did. It did a pullback. From now on, when you just do a quick scan with your multi-tool, it'll just make them appear. So, that'll be good. Yeah, and sometimes if all the objects don't show up, just do a second scan and you can find them. Alright, so it's pointing us at a person on the other side of the camp. So, 
Okay, so what we're going to do is we just recharge. We're going to go ahead and call it here. I want to thank you all for watching the video. And please hit the like and subscribe, like I said at the beginning. I really appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you guys in the next video. Again, I apologize for the lack of sound at the uh, for the game, but hopefully the voiceover was sufficient. You know, wave goodbye here. Take care, everybody. Again, thanks for watching.